Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? I would assume today uh, it, it was it was hot at camp, but first day of full pads. Overall, what was the vibe like there? So I actually didn't notice they were in pads for a while, and I at one point turned to Brooke Kirchhofer and asked, is it just me, or do they all look a little slow and behind? And then she pointed out that they had the pads on. So <laughs> I think you're kind of used to a little more physicality when they put pads on, but I have been sitting here thinking just how different some of these climates for training camp are, because when you put pads on and in New Orleans heat, it just kind of makes you slow down a little bit, I think, and get used to that. So there were a little looser coverage uh, moments today that I probably could attribute it to that and a little bit more drops that we were used to as well. Um, and uh, finally, Dennis Allen had said after practice that these practices have been shorter uh, because of the CBA. And so that kind of made sense in line with it being a little rush seeming and just not feeling like it ever really got going. But there's still really good competition. And I think that really says more, given that there was kind of an obvious physical thing going on. Um. Maddie, one of the things that apparently, and I, look, obviously wasn't there today, but when I'm following Twitter and looking at a lot of the different things that come out were about Jimmy Graham. And I'm curious if there's a spot for Graham on this team. Or is there a spot for four tight ends? But when you have a day like apparently he did today, it makes you more wonder, like, how do you not keep a guy like that? So walk us through it. Uh, what was so impressive about Jimmy Graham today? There was this one really physical contested catch where I think him and Troy Pride, he kind of just tossed these two guys to the side, and it reminded me almost of the George Kittle stomp where he dragged mm. two Saints players on his face oh. mask kind of thing. A little nicer to see, though, when uh, that offensive player is you know, presumably going to be on the Saints. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about them carrying multiple tight ends, but you just think about the fact that he has looked smaller and he's a little you know, getting back into shape, and still able to just kind of throw guys off of him with, with little to any effort that it seemed whatsoever. And just his six, seven stature really standing out today and getting in on a lot of blocking sets as well. Um, I feel like I kind of joked about this at first, but yeah, he's kind of on the older side, but he has a lot of time in this system, to be honest. And you can kind of tell that familiarity almost up front. And just again, the fact that he's still getting back into this and it elicited, you know, huge, roar from the crowd that was back there today good for the people that are coming out to these really hot practices but they, they got a certain show today with Jimmy Graham out there how um how might he compare or contrast with Jawan Johnson who, who are both I mean correct me if I'm wrong Maddie but similar stature at least in height and then both sort of perceived as the more pass catching tight end so how do the two compare or contrast well, it's a good question um, because now I'm thinking and you really haven't seen that much from Jawan Johnson kind of since Jimmy Graham has come along. Um, and Taysom actually got quite a bit of snaps at tight end today uh, going on these one-on-one -on -one wide receiver, tight end, defensive back drills, what have you. Uh, so it's kind of hard to see the depth chart there. Um, and it's really, it's kind of just hard to project about Jimmy at this point. It, you know, it's only been very limited time seeing him. Um I would just kind of have to see what they do when there's more than one tight end in there and what, you know, an actual, we get into the two minute offense situations and they actually start running down the field, you know, who's kind of regularly in that lineup that might give us a little more information, but I wasn't seeing Juwan Johnson kind of just swinging guys off him the way that Jimmy Graham did today again. And so I'll just kind of go back to the Jeremy shocking notion that if he just gets behind a down marker, turns around and sits, that solves a lot of the issues on the offense from last year. Uh, Jawan Johnson might be able to do that, but I think Jimmy Graham has a little bit of height on him, and that might make the difference in those complete contested catch situations where he might not be able to get as much separation as he did before, but it just might not matter. Uh, she's on Twitter at Maddie Hudak underscore 94. That's H-U-D-A-K. Give her a follow. Um, I've also been seeing a lot of pop-off about Jake Hayner. Uh, I haven't asked you yet about the rookie quarterback. What have been your observations so far? He's looked really good. It's hard to ignore um, that he's looked a little farther on than some of the developmental prospects that have come through here. Now, maybe that's kind of a byproduct of being with his mentor and Derek Carr and just kind of feeling that familiarity. But he looks strong at rookie minicamp, and it just looks like he's still throwing with confidence. He processes really quickly, and you know, he's trying out some of these more difficult throws during training camp. 
which is what you'd like to see. It doesn't seem like he's kind of worried about not getting rostered, if that makes sense, where he's actually trying to just kind of air things out and try a little harder, make those mistakes early on. But it's good to see them all throwing with that confidence. And you almost don't notice when they switch quarterbacks, which is a huge thing compared to the last couple of years where there's kind of been just a mess going on there. But the fact that it's run really well with Jameis Winston in there as well. But yeah, Jake Hayner, it, it stands out how short he is. Um, mm. But he definitely has that command to you know hu- command the huddle. And you can just see the vision there for him. It's just really good development from all the quarterbacks so far. Anything else? Um, I know go, coming into camp, Maddie, we were going to keep a real close eye on the receivers because the, there's so many numbers there, right? Anybody catching your eye early? It's, I mean, not necessarily the best answer, but Michael Thomas is kind of the answer to me. Just watching him go up in these one-on-one drills against Marshawn Lattimore and seeing the competition level on both sides, especially really in that one-on-one defensive back wide receiver drill that we were kind of treated to in front of our face today. Uh, and the fact that, you know, again, all these throws are being made and you just see the conversations with Michael Thomas and Derek Carr almost after every snap, even if he doesn't throw to him. So I'm talking a lot to Alvin Kamara too, uh, who's also really stood out. I was Rashid Shahid. I think all these guys have had their moments. I believe it's a, is it A.T. Perry? Yeah, A.T. Perry from Wake Forest. Yeah. A.T. Perry, yeah. He's had, you know, really strong catches here and there. But it's just kind of those familiar guys that you're used to seeing kind of going as those primary looks. But I will just go back to, again, what we were talking about these last couple of off seasons. I guess you had Michael Thomas and Jarvis Landry out there this time last year. So I do say that all with hesitancy because I understand that injuries happen, things happen. Uh, the fact that you know, Olave has almost become somewhat of a background noise, not in a bad way, but just to say that there's so many people to look at that you almost kind of forget about guys one day or another. Mm-hmm. Um, I got two more for you. Uh, Maddie Hudak is with us, Saints camp correspondent, doing a great job with us all throughout Saints training camp. Um, Andrus Pete left with injury today, and obviously you kind of hold your breath because of last week whenever we saw Trey Turner go out on Friday, same spot there on the interior. Any update on, on Andrus Pete? Any, anything you can tell us about that situation? Uh, well, he told us after practice it was, you know, calf injury to which someone responded is this the same kind of calf injury that happened to Turner last week uh, to which she said no but that's again kind of all the speak uh, that we got about the situation but it's unfortunate because uh, Andres P doesn't exactly have a strong reputation for you know being able to withstand an entire season at this point and so it is a little worrisome that being said to see James Hurst and Trevor Penning be the options that they slot in we saw a little bit of Throckmorton and someone else at one point at left bar the, the name is blanking but it did feel a little less frantic than what we've seen these last couple of weeks of switching guys all across the line, just to be able to see first with that guard role, to see Penning get snapped there too, and, and see the right side of the line with Ramchek as well being out there, which we hadn't really seen the last couple of days. So maybe that's always something that they're always kind of accounting for. If, you know, Ryan Ramchick and Cesar Ruiz that one day took their rest day, didn't look like anyone did today. And so they were able to kind of absorb that on repeat. Injury relatively easily. Okay. Um, by the way, for those who are watching us, uh, I did just th- show a video there of Pete limping off. That video is courtesy of Brooke Kirchhoffer, who tweeted it. So I want to make sure we give attribution to Brooke for that video uh, at New Orleans Football. Um, last thing for you, Maddie. Um, uh, Marshawn Lattimore, apparently having a great camp so far. I think there's always the question whenever. You and I have talked about this before, but when someone's doing really well at camp, it's like, all right, is it a product of one side of the ball being good or the other side of the ball being not so good? It's always that sort of conflict that you don't know until you play someone else. Um, what are your thoughts on on Lattimore so far in camp? Yeah, I think it's safe to say with someone like Lattimore, uh, you know, I'm less worried about whether or not training camp is providing him competition, and I should kind of be worried about that. Right. I know that there's been this perception of Lattimore you know, trying some matches, not trying so hard the other ones. I think last year kind of dispelled that narrative. But again, when you have someone like Michael Thomas that you're going up against every single day at practice and being thrown to you by someone like Derek Carr, I think it's kind of hard to separate the fact that the quarterback room has looked strong. Guys like Marshawn Lattimore have looked really strong. And so have guys like Michael Thomas. All that to me just comes from really strong play going on on all sides of the ball. Like I said, we haven't seen as many kind of, you know, drills where they stay in the same type of offense, get into a rhythm and see how they fare in that kind of situation, but the plays that he's made one-on-one, being able to just disrupt Michael Thomas on a route in general is easier said than done, and we saw him just kind of bully guys last year and almost kind of feel like there wasn't enough competition on the other side. Well, he definitely has a counterpart in Lattimore, and he's broken up passes for him, Shahid, and just several other guys, and has been really just a star every day of camp. 
Maddie Hudak gives us our Saints camp reports. Every day the black and gold are out there. Make sure you follow her on Twitter at Maddie Hudak underscore 94. Maddie, we appreciate it as always. Thanks. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Thanks, guys. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.